Welcome, Coach, and congratulations. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we're joined by the head coach of the Troy Trojans, Shanda Rigby. Coach, if you could start with a brief opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Um, just extremely thankful and grateful to be here, of course. There's so many good coaches and good teams. We just feel really blessed to be, to be in this situation. Um, there would never be an easy championship against Louisiana Lafayette and Gary Broadhead. Um, <clears throat> they had a great game plan. You know, a lot of people felt like if they could keep um, – our two post players, you know, into low numbers that that they would have a, that that would be the way to have a chance against us, and they did. Uh, Alexis didn't really have um, a lot of points or anything in the first half, but uh, they were. I think they were focusing on her a great deal, which which left other people open and other people stepped up. And I can't say enough about the people who came off the bench: Julia Dunlap, um, Taija Moore, um, Emily. They, they came in, especially in the first half, and really did their jobs. And um, that made it difficult uh, because even though Louisiana Lafayette had a great game plan and they were executing it very well, it was the people who came in off the bench in the first half that enabled us to have a lead at halftime. Thank you very much. We'll go to questions now. With the slow, with the slow start by Karanga and Die, how big was Jasmine Robinson early in the game? Well, yeah, I can't say enough about her. Just look how poised she was. She took the right shots at the right time. She delivered the ball where it needed to go. And I thought it was really big. At the, in the end, um, in the fourth quarter, she came up on her own and kind of did a man-to-man -man press on her own and got a huge deal, a huge momentum play, and we scored behind it. And, um, and so she's a four-year player for us. She's a senior, and she just played like a senior. The lead was cut down to three in the second half. What worked down the stretch for you guys to stay calm and keep them at bay? They had, they had a lot of senior leadership, but we did as well. You know, we did as well. And we, we've got people who've been in some horrific battles to try to win, even, even throughout this tournament. Nothing was easy, right? I mean, everything was either overtime or came down to a three-point game. And so, um, you know, the, it makes you stronger. And we, we've been in those situations before. And, um, and the, the ability of our players to keep the belief that we're going to win. I mean, I think that that says it all. They, they never flinched. They believed no matter how close it got that they were going to win. And they were able, that belief was able to, to make them make good decisions and make good plays. How critical was rebounding in this game? I mean, it was very critical. I haven't really looked at stats yet, but um, when, when Alexis and Felmas couldn't really get going, like we couldn't get the ball to them in our offense, they started rebounding and drawing fouls on the putback. Not a lot of fouls called in this game. I, I thought it was a well-officiated game, but it's a good officiated game. But uh, they started just being having to be really strong on the boards and putbacks, and that's what kind of took the lid off of the rim for Alexis and uh, helped us get a little bit of advantage. So rebounding was critical throughout the game, but it was also critical in getting those post players uh, going with us. After the way the season ended last year, how sweet is this moment for you and the team? Yeah, so I wanted to mention that because, um, you know, there's, I have a, I have, I'm so joyful right now, but there is a part of me that um, it grieves a little because we didn't get to experience that, this with the five seniors. Some of their parents were actually in the stands today. I saw them up there, but uh, we had five seniors last year that kind of paved the way for this, um, and they didn't get to come do this. They won an outright championship last year, but didn't get to come to the tournament. But, um, you know, they're with us in spirit. And again, I'm not sure if we would have done this today. I mean, um, those players push these players every day and, and the belief they had that they would get to come do this. I'm glad we were able to finish it for them. Is this championship a little, maybe a little more special since you won it in Pensacola, a place where you coached seven years and had great memories? No doubt, no doubt. I mean, I kept looking around and seeing people I haven't seen in eight years or 10 years. And they were just, you know, a lot of people were here supporting us, old friends. Um, the, the president from Pensacola State, I saw him here, had no idea he was coming. Um, and just so many, you know, and I'm just thankful. And of course it makes it more special. I know this is probably tough to do, but where does this championship rank when compared to the other two? Um, I think they just keep getting sweeter. Everyone's special, but uh, they keep getting sweeter. And the, the thought that we get to represent this conference in the NCAA tournament, it's just, it's just almost too much. It's just too, it's just uh, overwhelming the gratitude I feel. And we really want to do a great job. We want to get out there and show what a great conference we have. We want to be a great representative of Troy University in the Sunbelt Conference in the NCAA tournament. So that's kind of what our mind will turn to now. 
Can you also reflect on what the program has accomplished that you're heading to your third trip to the NCAA tournament now? Um, just, it's amazing. And, you know, it starts with administration. First of all, we're giving us a chance, my staff and I, um, again, especially me, you know, I was, a, uh, I was not a division one coach before I got to Troy. They gave me a chance. That's what our program is about is giving young ladies a chance and believing in them. Uh, kind of like what Troy did for me. And, um, and so I'm sorry, I forgot the question, <laughs> but, but it means, it means a lot. Like, especially our staff has been together for so many years. I think we're the longest standing staff in the Sunbelt conference. They're all great coaches. Um, so much, oh, so much of this credit goes to them. And, um, and it means so much to them because again, I've told, I've said this before in these statements, we, we begin with the end in mind. So the very first day we all meet each other as a new team, we draw out a map of how we can get to this moment. So if you do that and you work towards it every single day, and that's your goal every day, not just not just giving verbiage to it, but actually living it out. And when you lay your head on your pillow, you dream about it before you go to sleep, you pray for it. And then it comes to this moment, it's very special. What is it going to take now to get your team ready to get a win in the NCAA tournament? First of all, we got to fight the battle we've been fighting all year to stay safe and COVID free because we're getting tested seven days in a row. That's our first step. Um, so the cell, this championship will not be celebrated like uh, a normal championship out in the public or with people. We will, you know, we'll stay in our bubble and um, stay focused. We have to get rested and recuperated. And then um, today's Monday, starting on Wednesday, we're going to have to, um, we're going to enter our fifth season, which is NCAA, NCAA tournament. We call that our fifth season. And um, we want to be the most prepared team peaking at the right time when we get to that tournament. So we still have a lot to push for. Well, thank you very much for your time, Coach. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time and congratulations once again thank on the championship. You. Thank you, go Trojans. Media, we're now joined by uh, senior forward number 25, Alexis Dye from the Troy Trojans. Uh, we'll go ahead with questions from the media. The first question is, uh, you're, you're always a strong rebounding team. Did your coaches stress the importance to dominate the boards in this game? Yes, because Without rebounds, we probably wouldn't have won this game. Um, rebounds is a key thing in what we do each and every day. That's why we practice on it each and every day. The lead was cut down to three in the second half. What worked for you guys down the stretch, and, and how did you stay calm? Rebounding. Uh, we had to um, get rebounds offensively, and defensively we had to box out. And it just really all came down to rebounds. Rebounds won the game and great defense. Louisiana is known to be a great defensive team. They held y'all to 36% shooting. Are they a tough team to play against? Um, yes, they were, but we were kind of like slowing down, trying to play their tempo when we should have been playing our tempo. Did the competitiveness of your first two games in the tournament help your team stay focused today? It did. This time we're joined by the head coach of the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, Gary Broadhead. Coach, could you start off with a brief opening statement and then we'll go to some questions. Yeah, I thought, you know, at times, you know, we made runs and all that, and they made runs and uh, it made it a little difficult. But, you know, uh, I think that second quarter hurt us uh, uh, in scoring when they had 23. And I didn't really notice the third and fourth, but I, it looked like the second half. Uh, we caught, you know, I think we scored 42 the second half. So we kind of found a way to get it inside and tie these that kind of took over and I thought when we made that run toward the end, uh, uh, we needed to make some stops and we didn't, you know. Uh, I saw second chance points were like 24. Uh, so that that really hurt us. And that's that's what they live and die by, you know, shooting the ball and going to get it. And Coach Rigsby does a good job, makes it difficult to play, but it's fun. I love playing against it. And, you know, we just kind of fell a little short. Held them in 73. I know they score 150 a game. So I thought we did a pretty good job. but. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of disappointing. I think some uh, some things got to happen to do a little bit better, but uh, it's just part of the game. And uh, had a great season. Would have loved to finish with a, a win, but I know we have opportunity to go WNIT. So, question? Thank you, Coach. First question is, what were you able to do differently offensively in the second half than the first half? Did you change up how to attack their defense, or did the shots just start to fall? Well, Ty Doucette. You know, I think we went in and we got some touches for her. And I think she was just a lot more aggressive. The first half, you know, we got some, she, she, I think she was 0-1 for 8, 0-1 for 9. I thought she was getting banged up. But, you know, I thought 
she kind of made up her mind, banged up or not. She was going to go at him, and I thought she went at him, and and the ball, and you right, the shot started falling. Um, so yeah, I think that was the big thing. Is and then once we got some touches inside, we were able to uh, kind of get some guard play, get them open, and we hit some shots, uh, especially when we made the run. I think we had two threes in a row, and uh, and they always had an answer. It seemed like though that was the tough part. You mentioned the rebounding, but how hard is it to rebound against Troy? No comment. Did your players lose their cool with the physicalness of Troy in the paint and get you off your game at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we watch so much film. I, I think I'm going to get into the age where I'm not going to watch it no more because you kind of know what they're going to do and how they do it. It's just uh, – and this is the 50th I – told, I told the team, this is probably the 50th game I play against Rigsby because we coast against each other in high school, and it's the same, you know, so I'm showing my age. But – I think this was our uh, seventh, 18th game against each other since we've been at UL and Troy. Now she's got us 10 to eight. So it's just always a battle. I always feel that we can, we're can we gonna win because of our defense, you know, and I was wrong today. But, you know, there are, everybody raves over the offense and that's what they, you know, I guess that's why they, um, the game is played like right now is it's all about offense. The fans want offense, offense, offense. It's, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to play defense, um, the way everything is played. We heard all year about Troy's speed, but is it hard to prepare for it without seeing it firsthand? I mean, they just they, – all they do is push it and shoot it, push it and shoot it, you know. And it, if you look at the percentages, we had a better shooting percentage than them. Their thing was the second chance points. You know, they, they, they just crashed the boards. And, you know, we've been talking about the little things, blocking out. you got to block them out, you know. And it's tough to block them out when they're on your back, but that's just part of it. You mentioned that they always seem to have an answer, but how proud are you of your team's ability to keep fighting back every time? No doubt. You know, I think that's what we have. You know, we always play together. I think every, every game, you know, we haven't blown anybody out this year. You know, every game was close. And, you know, even when, you know, uh, during the conference, it was always close. And we always found a way in the fourth quarter to kind of come together and, and um, and be effective at what we did, you know. Do our do what we do, you know. We kind of coach like that, you know. We we more worried about what we do and and how we play our defense and how we play our offense, and um, not, don't really worry too much about some of that stuff. You can't even really control what the other team is doing, you know. And uh, so I'm just proud of them. Proud of the fact that they they able to fight back, you know. Just like dang, you know, just a little run. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times it's on me. Maybe I should have called a timeout when we went three. I'm not very good at stopping the momentum. I thought we had the momentum, and I thought it was going to carry through. And then here comes Troy, and, you know, they hit a couple of shots, and they pull in, you know, they back up by nine, you know. So it's tough. And, and, and you know, it's what they do. It's their DNA. They, they, you're never out the game with them, but you never – the game's never over with them. You know, you could have a 20-point lead and they could come back. It's just the way they play. And it's, we have time. Effective, it's effective for them. We have time for one more. This may be hard to appreciate today, but you mentioned the WNIT. What would it mean for your team to be able to head to the WNIT and continue this season? It, it means a lot because it's the first time for the program, you know, it's the first time that we win conference. And it's our 50th year anniversary for our program. And so for us to qualify for the, you know, we've never been asked or, I mean, we played preseason WNIT. So this is the first time in the history of the program in 50 years to, to win the conference and then to go to WNIT. I mean, it would be nice. We, we already went to the NCAA tournament in 2005. So, you know, the, um, you know, it would be nice to go again, but so it's a first for us, you know, and hopefully it's not a last. And what, one last question. Was there an impact with losing Hallman for much of the game and what happened with her? Oh, uh, she went up for a shot and a girl undercut her. And so she had, a uh, she, she twisted her ankle extremely bad. And, but she's tough. She wanted to come in. She was, I mean, bang. She probably shouldn't have gone back in, but she she wanted to play. And I think that affected us too. You, you, you never know. She's kind of an instant offense player. She's, you know, she can score in bunches. So we don't know what would have happened if she would have stayed healthy. But, you know, it's just, uh, she could have missed 10 shots too. You know, could have gone either way. But we sure could have used her, I think, in times when, you know, we got a little tired and kind of turned over the ball. That's you know, just part of the game.
and, and WNIT will be great. But do you think your team's deserving of an at-large NCAA bid, perhaps? Oh, yeah. I, you know, it's like uh, I've been watching this league for a long time. I'm born and raised in Lafayette, so I've watched UL. And when UL, when we, we got our at-large, we were 11th seed uh, when Middle Tennessee was ranked 13th in the country. Uh, so I know a lot about, I mean, I, I got the history about they, they were 13th in the country and uh, we played them in the finals just like this. And, uh, and so we got a, they got a six seed and we got an 11 seed. And that was back when the Sun Belt was getting two. They were getting, you know, they were always getting two people in, you know. And I, th I think that uh, our commissioner is looking really strong at the women's program and, and how we shut that, we cut down to 16 games instead of doing 20 light men and beating up on each other. I think when they started doing that, it kind of hurt us. Now they're looking at ways for the women to be able to try to get two two at large. I mean, at large team. And I mean, I, I would I would I would be happy to be the one to start it off. But you know, it is what it is. You know, hey, with the you know with COVID, you never know. I mean, we're 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 open. I mean, we'll play UConn. It doesn't. I'm I'm ready. Thank you very much for your time, Coach. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it.